Marcus Garvey Brown. I don't know what slave master Nelson was. I don't know how many black people he had killed or how many black women he had raped. But I do know that the name Nelson Place has become synonymous with crime. Nelson Place has become synonymous with death. But that's good news. You know why? Because God chooses the despised and the rejected. He chooses out of death, murder, crippleness, uh, destruction, bad. He brings about good. And that's why we're up in here today. This is the first time, this today is the first time any positive meeting has been held here ever in 20 some odd years or more. Is that right? Give yourself a black hand. Never. Never have black men and black women gathered in this area to do something constructive. So I want you to hear Brother George. He's got to get back. Uh, he's got to get back. But I want you to meet a black contractor who is helping us do our work here. He's helping us do our work. And I'm contracting with him to train black men. Yes. Every black man on the block that's listening to this sound of my voice who's out there on the block. Every brother on the block, if you want a job, contract if you want a job learning how to paint, if you want a job learning how to do floors, if you want a job learning how to take uh, 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 that which is destroyed and to make it beautiful in our community, you can come right here to the Black Men's Training Academy and you can get that assignment, you can get that training, and you can get that skill so you can go on out here and make you a career to take care of yourself and your family. So let us hear right now what skills that we that can be trained and what he has to offer let us bring on brother george who is one of our top black contractors in the area let's hear from brother george. Thank, you, thank you thank you thank you everyone again my name is george wilkins i'm a junior also uh the name of my company is total package remodeling um i have a number of trades under my belt maybe about five or six so for anybody interested in learning drywall or carpentry, which is framing and trim doors. I can teach all that flooring, painting, plumbing, electrical I do, uh, decks, windows and doors. Windows and doors. Uh, pretty much, I'm 32 years in. This is my 32nd year. I started when I was 17. I'm 49 now. So right now I'm training my sons to take over so I can just fall back into an administrative uh, sort of uh, kind of for the business. I can get out the tools. I'm trying to get out the tools at this point in my life, but I'm definitely looking forward to training young black men, older black men, whoever want to learn. Question? Hello, I'm, I'm definitely here. I'm definitely here. Like I said, carpentry, drywall, plumbing, electrical. I do decks, flooring, tile work. If you want to learn tile in the bathrooms, I can teach all that. I'm, I'm well, well versed in all of them. I got tools I can hand out to people. You got to teach tools and all that. So I'm well versed. I'm um, looking forward to working with you guys, man. Okay. All right. Let's give a black hand for the joy. All right. All right. We'll let you go back. All right. Thank you for coming through. And, okay. And I'm hoping we'll start the class in two weeks. Okay. On the unit I talked about, I'm going to have some recruits. Okay. And then I'm going to work a deal out with you. You take a day and you go work on that apartment up there and, mm -hmm. and train them. And, and I'm going to pay you for doing that. Okay, I appreciate and it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give him a strong hand in that. <laughs> yes, sir. Contracting, repairs, home improvement, building is what the black man must learn and must know how to do yesterday. And so that's what we'll be offered here. We have another contractor coming in a moment, but let me move the program forward so from Free Solar Plus. I mean, these brothers are organized. Yes. Everywhere they're rolling with these blue shirts and they <laughs> roll with us on the corner and they're rolling with us, man. And we love their spirit. And, yes, and so they got this. And they said they're going to uh, uh, turn this into a, uh, a building with solar power. You got it. You want to turn the next building over with solar power? You got it. You want to turn the one up here, Brother Howard? Roth 2925 solar power you got it you say that it ain't gonna I mean forget the terms of it whatever it is zero cost zero cost that's the kind of cost I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> if you want 61 Hawaii Avenue 8 unit building in yes, northeast you got it yes, if you want 5,000 shares
Sheriff Road, right over here on 50th. You got it. Yes, sir. 40, 43 Clay Place, right over here, right now. You got it, yes, man. Yes, sir. And because of your spirit, we will help you find every person and every landlord around here that we can. Let's That's bring right. on the brothers from Free Solar Plus. And plus, this long time activist here in Washington, D.C., my long time brother, Quasi Seafoam. Brother uh, Quasi, let's bring him on. All right. Bring him on with a strong round of applause. Come on, y'all. Get that All right. right. Oh, Mr. Marshall, yeah. how are you there? All right. All right. How's everybody doing? All right. Hi, All right. Sir. My name is uh, Nate Reed, and our office is right at 3536 uh, Minnesota Avenue in Northwest. Uh, me and my team, Southeast, I'm sorry, right down the street on the other side of DuPont Park. Me and my team were in the McDonald's on New York and, uh, and Bladesburg Road, mm -hmm. and one of your leaders kept looking at me, and I kept looking at him. He didn't say anything. Then I got to talking about soul and this and that, this and that. And he came to me and I just felt the presence of a strong, serious man that had a wonderful message for me. Yeah. He gave me the flyer, invited me to the uh, meeting out at the uh, restaurant, mm -hmm. and I was immediately convicted to come out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just excited. It's time to, uh, in the spirit of unity, it's time to unify. And I'm just excited about supporting y'all. Y'all supporting me, and we doing what we doing. With this free solar, it's totally zero cost. The solar panels cost anywhere from $20,000 to $500,000. We can put these structures on any residential or commercial property in the city at zero cost. And these solar panels will reduce your PEPCO bill by 80 to 90%. So that we can almost turn that as a reparation. Because we know that Marcus Garvey, one of his tenants was reparations for the black people. So we're very, very excited. I thank God to be associated with a wonderful man like Minister Malik, and uh, I'm just looking forward to, uh, again, because our office is right down the street, mm -hmm. I'm a total proponent of unity in the community. Mm -hmm. So every time y'all got something going on, Nate Reed and his solar guys will be there. Because if y'all support me, yeah. I support y'all, and it's all about unity in the community. Right. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Can any man get jobs there? Also? Yes, we train. Oh. Yeah. Tell them how it's free, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do train. We know that uh, door knocking is almost like basic training in the military. It forces you to think on your feet. You have to be strong on that door. You have to be able to communicate properly, and you got to be brave. Because you don't know what's going to come on that other side of the door. So we teach young men how to stand tall, state their truth, and make it happen. So we're very, very excited. If you know anybody that has the gift of gas, because you know you got the construction side, which is the people that are building the walls and this and that. Then you got the contract side, those that get the paperwork signed. My side is the contract side. So if you know any young men or women that's excited about verbalizing, communicating, building strength, and making real good money, by all means, have them let me know. We got our, our, our tent right downstairs. Come on, get some information, and again, let's build this nation together. So we are definitely hiring. All right. Yeah, all right. All right. Get a strong man, please. Yeah. Turn up a little bit if you can a lot of feedback.
like my brother, my cousin, uh, Brother Stafford Sutton from the National Policy Alliance. National Policy Alliance. And he's got initiatives, jobs, and many other things. He came all the way from Baltimore. He's a strong black man. Yes, sir. And he is here to help us also. So let's hear from Brother Stafford B. Sutton here from the National Policy Alliance. Let's, let's bring him on. Come on. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, truly, I'm glad to be here. I'm always going to support my cousin. We, we real cousins. <laughs> and brothers. And so, just so that you know, uh, I am one of the board members for the National Policy Alliance. Uh, the National Policy Alliance, we write the policy for the Congressional Black Caucus, for the state legislators, we work with the black mayors, uh, we also work with big blacks in government and other organizations. We both work on both sides of the aisle, whether it's Democrat, Republican, or it can be the uh, independent, it doesn't matter, but it's about our people and how we put together the actual policy. See, what most of the people don't understand, you've got to have policy to affect the laws. Yeah. And the laws are what they have to go by. Mm -hmm. So that's a piece that uh, we are having our conference in September during the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, I've already invited uh, Brother Malik to be there and be a speaker. He was one of our speakers on last year. We talk about uh, reparation. We talk about how there, there needs to be police reform. We talk about the different uh, organizations that they have, such as the um, Energy Department and all the different departments that we need to be a part of, just the sporting, which means that people of color are supposed to have get these jobs that are coming out of the government, whether it's the EPA or whoever else. But anyway, one of the other things is that we have jobs, we, we actually will pay interns over the, on the Maryland side, if they have an office, we will pay for them to come and do a 12-week internship free for any business that is out here. So if there's a business, we will put young people at your business and they learn from you and we, put, we take it out of our budget. So we are, we're here to know, let you know that we are part of it, uh, what you all are doing, glad that you invited me, and anything that we can do, especially when it comes to policy, people, we need to know that policy is important. Yes, sir. The law is important. We have to make sure that we're behind it. And this is a, this is a real pivotal time right now during the time of voting. We know who we, 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 who we're we dealing with, right? We know what we're so, dealing with, right? right. Yeah. So let us be about doing the right thing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. All right. We're dealing with it. We're getting it right. We're working progress. But the best thing we got is... It's human beings up in here, is that right? Right. That's right. We got us some brothers in here that want to do the right thing. Right. Okay, so I think I'm concluding the free program to bring on our speaker because I think y'all want to eat some barbecue, is that right? <laughs> yeah. I want to eat some, some, some halal, halal barbecue, is that right? And y'all want to get down to eating and we want to feed the block. Okay, so let's conclude with what we've heard. This is, this is Marcus Garvey's birthday, and this is the opening of the Black Community Resource Center and the Black Men's Training Academy here on 2917 Nelson Place Southeast. This is a permanent office. This is a place that we plan on having open on a regular basis. This is a place where we want to distribute clothes to the need. This is a place where we're going to train black youth and black men in contracting. You can come here and, and get trained on contracts. This is a place where businessmen like the uh, free, like uh, free solar plus, and brother Nathaniel and other business persons in our community, they can come through here and network and get support. This is a center for self-determination.
This is part of the work of the Afro-descendant nation under the leadership of the Honorable Silas Muhammad. This is one of his outposts, one of our great Muslim pioneers. We are his helpers, and this is a part of his operation because uh, I, we are absolutely, no matter what we say and what we do and what we're teaching, we're all about full and complete reparations. Is that right? Yes, all right. So Mr. Garvey says the red is for what? Red is for our struggle, struggle. and the blood that we have uh, undergone and the lives that we lost in this struggle. That's what the red is about. Right. The red up in here is about um, the fight and the struggle that's going to take to get us out of this condition. Right? We, <laughs> we, we got in this condition bleeding and we're not going to get out of it without some sacrifice and giving up some blood also. Is that right? Nothing's right. going to be given easy to us. The black is for our people. Right. We don't care whether you are supporting Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. Right. We must have black unity. Is that right? That's right. We don't That's right. care what your political position is. I'm with the Democratic That's Party. Right. I'm with the Republican Party. Well, hell, I ain't even invited to the party. It don't make no difference. <laughs> That's right. The black and the red, black and green flag means that we are all brothers and sisters regarding, right. regardless to politics, right. regardless to what part of the city you in, what part of the County you in, right. we are all black people, but it's specifically here, my sister, black men in this struggle together, and we're all in one people in the struggle. I don't want any of the sisters to think that there's any division between the women and the men. Right. We're talking all this men talk, right. but you're a conscious black woman, you're a conscious black woman, you're a conscious black woman. I don't think you have any objection to seeing a strong black man stand up. Is that right? You're looking for a strong black man, is that right? You're looking for one, is that right? And you're looking for some, is that right? And you're looking for strong black men. Your sister say, yeah, I really am looking for strong black men. They are. So no division, we are all one people. The red, the black, and the green. And the green means uh, the future. The green means Africa. Green means land. We're meeting in this room here because we control the land. Right. We're not no gypsy black nationalists. Right. We got to come in and rent the building and get out by four o'clock or else. Or somebody else owns it. We're just moving around like a band of roving gypsies. No, we control the land. Right. So we control the building. We Come on, bring the sister queen on in. Let her have a seat. There it is. Beautiful black queen coming on in here. Uh, together. Um, we control the land. So we can open up our office, open up our business, business, open up our headquarters right here. And we, as I said before, we control this land, but we want that land at the corner. That's right. We want that old liquor store in our possession. Oh, Mr. Hahn, I'm imagine a Korean in our community owning the whole damn corner up there. Owning all that, I think they ain't worth up there about Six million dollars mm. at that corner from mm. that row of businesses and properties up there that they've written out of is worth at least six million dollars. And we want it in our hands. And he's gonna have to give it up. Yes, sir. He gonna have to give it up to black people in the black community because we're gonna move our headquarters up there. We want to establish a beachhead or an outpost of business, of life right here in Southeast Washington, D.C. We want this area to be known for black men training, black people organizing, self-determination, the word of God, jobs and resources, it can come from right here. Why? Because we control the land right here. We got this piece of land and we're going to clean up the rest of the land on the block. That's the red, the black, and the green. And I'm going to bring to you now the representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who the Honorable Silas Muhammad. I want to bring to you here who will give us our message before we go and eat. And I know we all trying to eat. But we give us our message. I want to bring to you uh, the, perhaps the best deliverer of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the Washington, D.C. area. I want to bring to you one of the most dedicated, long-time servants who have been here in our community year after year after year. And you will continue to hear his voice. Look at the young, blood, young brother, young black man coming in in the back. 
Let's bring on to the roster here, Minister Naji Muhammad. Let's bring him on and let's hear from him. All right. Yes, sir. Come on, give it to him. Yes, sir. All right. Good. All right. To my beautiful black brothers and sisters, Afro descendants. How do you feel today? Blessed. Blessed. I don't want to hear you now. Blessed. This is the day that Marcus Garvey was born. How do you feel? Blessed. Blessed. All right. Marcus Mosiah Garvey was born August 17, 1887, in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Jarvey made significant contributions in the uplift of our people. And we salute him today. Yes, yes. We have to give honor and give respect to all of the leaders who work on behalf of the upliftment of our people. Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said of the late Marcus Mosiah Garvey. In his book, The Supreme Wisdom, okay. I have always had a very high opinion of both the late Noel Drew Ali and Marcus Garvey and admired their courage in helping our people, the so called Negroes, and appreciate their work. Now here is a another leader, a another black man, giving credit where credit is due. All right. And that's what we have to do with each other. We are all descendants of slaves. We are all Afro descendants. We are brothers and sisters, regardless of where we are at in this West, Western Hemisphere. I have lived in Los Angeles, Compton area, Pasadena, California. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I live in Brooklyn, Queens, and I have been here in the Washington, D.C. area for about 31 years. So I'm not a brother just trying to come later, no. I've been around. And I see the same condition in every city that I live in. The same condition. I've seen the drug problem in every city. Is that by design? Oh, yes, sir. That's attacking our family. That's attacking our community. That's destroying us as a people. That's right. The liquor stores. The liquor stores are placed in the black community, the Afro descendant community, to medicate you because of the pain that you are feeling. Yes, sir. That economic pain. Yes, sir. All year. You know what I'm talking about. You know the devastation of the black family. The black family torn apart because the black man 
he might not be able to take care of his family. Why it might be your sin. And before you know it, they have a heart. Open up. What about our children, our babies? Our babies. Teach Muhammad. Do you really, really, really love our babies? Teach Muhammad. Do you really, really love our babies? Yes. If you really love our babies, you wouldn't be selling drugs, selling death to our people. That's right. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm serious about this because that is so very, very close to home. I know. I know. I know. Believe me, I know. And I have felt that pain. I know about police killings. I had a relative of mine killed in New York City over 20 years ago. I know. I know about the criminal justice system. But I never did a day. I had relatives to do time. I had one relative who had 200 years plus life. A brother, 100 years. And I asked them, how did you feel when the judge really, uh, uh, judged it on you? He said, brother, my whole body went numb. I say to my brothers in the streets, come out of the streets because the streets never lost a battle or never fall to a draw. Mm. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Everybody in here knows somebody that knows somebody that has been incarcerated, right? Yes, sir. Let me tell you a short story. And I'm going to get back to my lecture. I was called to jury duty. I said, okay. So I went to my my bookshelf and I uh, pulled the book uh, by uh, Michelle Alexander, Mass Incarceration in the Era of Barack Obama. So <clears throat> they were selecting the jurors, potential jurors. And the judge asked the potential jurors, if they had any relatives that was incarcerated or was a part of the criminal justice system, it was about 50 some Afro descendants, and it was about three white people. And when he asked that question, all the black people stood up. And I looked around and I said, oh, wow. <clears throat> and the three white people were still sitting. So that lets me know that something is wrong. <clears throat> and the judge asked another question. <clears throat> Where is it in fact? Do you have any problems? Uh, with the criminal justice system. Where is that is that? And I stood up and I looked around and all the black folks sitting down. They re remained in their seats. And the judge said, I'm going to call you up to the bench in a few minutes, but I have to talk with the prosecuting attorney. I have to talk with the defense attorney. And he called me up. He said, well, you have a, you retired, you retired from a field of job. Why don't you want to serve on this jury? I said, Your Honor, I have a cousin who was sentenced to 200 years plus life in the penitentiary. 
I said, he didn't commit a murder. I said, he didn't rape anyone. I said, yes, he robbed. But at the age of 17, and that black man is out today, and he's 60 years old. Mm. Do you hear me? <clears throat> Do I know about the criminal justice system too? So I'm not a brother just popped up here in Washington, D.C. I've been around. <laughs> I can feel your pain because I'm just like you. My sister, I feel your pain. I know because I went to research the most horrific crimes that this Caucasian committed against our people. And when I read one book, I laid my head down on my desk and wept. Our people don't know the depths of what this Caucasian has done to our people. Hey. But let me move on with my election. We of the Afro descended nation give credit to the Honorable Noble Duale. Teach. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Teach. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Teach. And Dr. Huey P. Newton of the Black Panther Party. And we shall never forget Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Yes, sir. For the new Black Panther Party. Yes, sir. And his stand for self determination and independence. Yes, sir. All of these men taught unity. And here are some quotes. Marcus God. If anything state worthy is to be done, it must be done through unity. We can't get around that. What I'm trying to say to you today is that all of the leaders left a message of unity. Yes, sir. And there's something that we got to do. Yes, sir. You and I have to come together. There's something that we got to do. We got to do some work. We have unfinished business. <laughs> Our ancestors were set on a certain course. They gave us the baton. <laughs> And we got to carry it, carry it on. Yes, sir. Uh, fourth and go to go. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Are we going to follow the ball or go over into the end zone? What are we going to do? We're going to the end zone, brother minister. We're going into the end zone. Yes, sir. Right. If you believe that we're going into the end zone, raise your hands. Yes, sir. All right. And to my orthodox Muslim brothers, Prophet Muhammad said, and hold fast to the rope of God. Understand. All together and be not divided. Teach. Be not divided. Teach That's that Islam. Prophet Muhammad said. Teach that. Unity. Unity is what we want. That's right. Amen. Unity. That's what we want. We got to have it. <clears throat> we got to teach our offspring, our dear offspring, look, man, stop referring to yourself as dogs. Stop referring to yourself as men. Teach. Stop that. I saw something yesterday that paid me. There were four young men. And there was one white man, a white youth, with these other four black youth. 
And I'm listening. I'm listening. And one of the youth continued to use the word nigga in the midst by white white clothes in their midst. Brothers, we got to do better than that. That's right. Brothers, we got to stop your sons, sit down and talk with them. We have to educate them. You, 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 you're, you mean to say that we went from the N word to dog? What about what Marvin Gaye was living? He said, what's happening, brother? What's happening, sister? We got to get back to that. Yes, sir. We got to leave that degradation alone. Yes, sir. You know, I come from the white world. That made you love yourself. That made you not to love yourself. You are the cream of the planet Earth. God and goddesses of the universe. Teach. That's you. That's me. Teach, Muhammad. Once you learn your, your glorious past, you know why it's for you nothing. That's right on here. When you hear, they can't, they cannot tell you anything. If I'm somewhere at some agency or something that I'm being waited on, I'm waiting for them to call my name. And I can see them when they look at the neck. <laughs> they look at it, you know, for a second. And they call my name. And I stand up with great pride. Great pride. What's wrong with a, a righteous name? That's right. A good name is better than no. Teach. Yes, sir. I gave the white boy his name back. I said, you can have it back. Yes, sir. I said, I'll be damned if my children going to take your legacy into the past, into the future. Right there, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's no way. Once you learn who you are, once you get the knowledge of yourself, you look at the world differently. And when I had left that whole world, I closed the door. Uh, yes, sir. I love his cigarettes alone. <coughs> I love his wine alone. <laughs> I love his whiskey alone. Yes, and the last time I took a drink, brother, 45 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> last time I took a smoke. 45 years ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I left the old world. I'm in the world, but I'm not in the world. That's right. I left it alone. Because it was killing me. Killing me softly. <laughs> killing me. I remember. A living in Compton. There was a Catholic church on one side of the street, and there was a funeral home on the other side of the street. And at that particular time, I was not a member of the Lost Found Nation of Islam. And so, like everybody else, Everybody else that grew up in America, I did some of the same things that they did. That's right. I'm being truthful with you. That's right. I smoked briefer. That's over 45 years ago. That's right. So I'm sitting on the steps. I said, I've been smoking. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie to you, I was smoking at that time. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm kind of high. <laughs> I looked over to the left 
the people at the funeral was crying. And I looked over to the right. That was the Hispanics or uh, Mexicans. They were throwing rice. And that reality was so deep until I had to get up off the porch. Mm. So leave that world alone. What is drugs going to do for you? If you continue to smoke the cigarettes, it's going to kill you. And the white man continued to laugh all the way to the bank. Yes. And you cry all the way to the hospital. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. remarked, there has never been a solid, unified, and determined for us to make justice a reality for Afro-Americans. I want you to listen to these leaders talk about unity. And that's something that we got to forge. Brother and sister, you know we're supposed to be unified. And as long as this white man still divided, we know. As long as we can't sit down together and iron out our issues, the white man ain't going to rule. And he's going to divide us, keep us divided, and fight against each other. Right there, too. But when they see us come together in unity, it's going to be a hell of a day here in America. Yes, sir. No one drew our lead. Stated. Where there is unity, there is strength. Together we stand and divided we fall. I want you to listen to the old of you who love Malcolm, right? Yes, sir. Indeed. Malcolm talked about unity. Now listen to his words. Ignorance of each other is what has made unity impossible in the past. Therefore, we need enlightenment. We need more light about each other. Light creates understanding. Understanding creates love, love creates patience, and patience creates unity. Once we have more knowledge, light about each other, we will stop condemning each other and a united front will be brought about. Teach, Muhammad. Afro descendants, my beloved people, we must speak with one voice. Yes, sir. As we unify around the issue of self-determination and reparations. Teach. There's a great and enormous disparity in economics between us and the children of the slave masters due to 310 years of chattel slavery. Now I'm getting ready to really, really show you something. I'm getting ready to really, really show you how far we are behind. I'm going to show you this because there's no way. One economist said African American household pays for catch up since 1968, according to a report issued earlier this year by United for a Fair Economy, it will take 581 years or 20 generations to achieve Peace. economic parity between black and white. Moses. So that lets you know that something is wrong, right? Yes, sir. It's going to take 581 years or 20 generations? Come on, watch it. I don't even think it's going to get in there. I just did that. Longer than we've been here. Let me say it. Let me say it again. It will take 581 years. 
or 20 generations to achieve even economic parity, meaning equality, when it comes to income for white people. Let me go on a little further because I don't think that you really, 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 really understand. And you see how far, how far this devil has pushed us down into the economic mud. For more, for most Americans, home ownership is a major asset. Seventy-five percent of whites own their homes, while more than half of blacks rent. Each one. At the rate of progress recorded since 1970, UFE estimate estimates it will take 1,664 years to close the home ownership gap. 55 generations. Mm. Oh, brothers and sisters, our angel wouldn't do that. Our angel wouldn't push you down in a movie like that. I'm going to ask you, what are some black people who do go to talk to you? You know, you feel like when you do it, when you ask them for a job, you know, you got to go to give you all the things you learn from that, you know, you can get some details. Um, you know, that's how you do it. The only question to the end Okay. I want to say something to you. I want to show you that. How far this government has pushed you down mm -hmm. in the world that you're not equal for white people. Never will be. You can dream all you want to, but you never will be equal mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. When you have your own land, when you control your own destiny, mm -hmm. then you are equal with him. Mm -hmm. From the book, White Fragility. And in this book, it, it talks about white people in power. It talks about white people in from President Barack Obama and Vice President Kamala Harris. U.S. House Freedom Caucus, 99% white. <laughs> Current U.S. Presidential Cabinet, 91% white. People who decide what TV show we see, 93% white. People who decide which books we read, 90% white. People who decide which news is covered, 85% white. People who decide what music is produced, 95% white. People who direct the 100 top grossing films of all time worldwide, 95% white. Teachers, 82% white. Full time college professors, 84% white. Owners of men's professional football team, 97% white. Sounds like you need some reparations, right? Yes, sir. Yes. I'm almost finished. <clears throat> Dr. Cornel West, a staunch advocate for reparations for Afro descendants, entered the 2024 presidential race. His opponent, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, along with Jill Stein and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., have yet to declare that, that they are full support for full and complete reparations. At this time, to my knowledge, Afro descendants, do you actually think, do you actually think that Donald Trump or Kamala Harris is going to support full and complete reparations? No, no. I will say this, is that Dr. Cornel West, 
support full and complete reparations for our people. I can say that much about him. Yes, sir. But I can say that about the other two people. And in my clothes. I want you to know that there are 756 billionaires in America. 756 billionaires. And on this list that I was reading, it was only 10 Afro descendant billionaires. Mm. Now, Elon Musk is worth 218 billion. Mm. Elon Musk is able, if he wanted to, give each Afro descendant in America, which is what an Arab. One or two uh, million of us, he can give each one of us a billion dollar piece and still be worth $168.8 billion in his bank account. Brothers and sisters, I thank you for being here, Mohammed. Thank you for the Mohammed. This is almost concluding part one. I want my brother Mosiah, right? Yes, I want from Baltimore. We have special guests from the Marcus Garvey movement. Strong adherence to the legacy of Marcus Mosiah Garvey from Baltimore. I want you to, to hear just a, a brief closing message from Brother Mosiah. Then we're going to Brother Yehuru. We're going to take the speakers and everything out to the front because there are brothers out there on the block. And guess what? We have free hygiene kits. And they want, they want them and a bunch of youth, and they want them, and, and people on the block want us. And so we're going to go out there and network and shake some hands and, and give away some food and, and make our presence known. And, but this has been a great part. Go and give yourself a strong hand. It's a great environment. Give a strong black hand. Strong black hand. And we're not through yet. It's September the 10th. But we'll be at Even at Restaurant on September the 10th for our unity meeting in the region. Our program on September the 10th is called The Conspiracy to Kill the Black Man. Conspiracy to Kill the Black Man. But let it be known here on Marcus Garvey birthday on 2024 that we took a stand on this block. This block, which is to be called Marcus Garvey Way, we have heard from Brother Minister Naji Muhammad. Yes, sir. We must have yeah, we heard from Minister Naji Muhammad, who is going to be heard on this block regularly. Yes, sir. He is going to be. We need his word on this block. We need the presence of the Muslims. Is that right? That's yeah. right. Yes, sir. Because when Islam comes after everything else has failed. That's right. And everything has failed on Nelson Place. Is it right? That's right. Everything has failed. But today is a great day. The black men's movement is here. The Afro-descended nation is here. That's right. The Black Community Resource Center is here. And so uh, we're going to hear from Brother Mosiah that y'all can come, we can eat, we can fellowship, we're going to continue the word outside, and we want to win over the block. There's good brothers on the block, God is on the block, young people are on the block. So let's bring on Brother Mosiah, come on, and let me move on quickly. This is coming outside and we move to stage two. Brother Steele coming in and from here, from Governor Moore, right? Governor Moore's um, African Commissioner. Governor Moore's African Commissioner. What is your name, sir? Ian Campbell. Mr. Campbell, let's give him a strong hand. He's in the middle. Come in. You're good. I do in here. Oh, hold on. We got let, let the ladies and the children please have a seat. No, 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 no y'all fine. Y'all fine. We only going to be a minute. Let them sit down for a minute. Please. Let the kids. 
If there's another brother, just just hold your post for a minute. This is the way we envision. Right. This is right there. This is the way we envision. We envision that there would be so many in here that we have to be packing in here. You live on the block, man. Y'all live on the block. Oh, on that side. Y'all gonna eat with us today? Come on, let's give them a strong round of applause. Come on, they coming off the block. Life is coming on the block. Okay, so Brother Mosiah, come on, let's give it to him. Brothers and sisters, give it to him. Peace and blessings to the family. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, my name again is Josiah Fish. I come from Baltimore City. And uh, I got a lot of butterflies over me right now because it's a man standing behind me, this tall fella. And I've been uh, watching his YouTube videos when he was at uh, Iowa State University. Uh, and he had a powerful uh, movement going on. What was the name of your organization? Unity Nation. Unity Nation. And uh, if, if anybody ever heard of a man named Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, uh, you will learn that this man stood right beside him. And every step of the way, uh, I had so much respect, so much honor. Dr. Khaled is really my, uh, I would say, my most current Malcolm X. You know, Dr. Collard is my most current uh, uh, Marcus Garvey. Uh, if, Malcolm, if Dr. Collard was still alive today, we, we, we would be uh, on a whole nother level when it comes down to unity, especially with our young people. You know, Dr. Collard, he had uh, organized a million youth march. And we talked in 2001. That's not that long ago. 2001, um, he was definitely our front row, in, in my opinion. You know, everybody had their opinions on who they follow and who they rock with. But I, I was a, a advocate, an advocate of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad to the fullest. I still am today. I am who I am today because I have studied his words. I don't think nobody looked at more Dr. Khaled YouTube videos than me. To be honest with you. So that's how much I love Dr. Khaled. And I, and I, I had to love this man because that was his spiritual call, but that makes him my brother, and that's my spiritual call. Yes, sir. Um, this, this book, the, the book of Khaled. I bought this book a year ago, and I read the whole thing from front to back. Um, it, it brought me even closer to who Dr. Collard was. I, I definitely recommend that everybody buy this book. If you want to learn of, to me, our most recent revolutionary, Dr. Collard Abdul Muhammad, and his legacy written by attorney Dr. Manizu Shabazz. Um, that book, that book inspired me to write a book. That's good. And this is a true story. It's called My Schizophrenic Bank Robbery for Slave Reparations. Um, 2013, uh, I was in the military. I was experimented on to look up MK Ultra. I was drugged. Uh, and from, from that time up until 2022, um, I've been struggling with all different kind of mental health crises. But the only thing that really has kept me strong and together is the Black Liberation Movement. And that's just the truth. When I study what my ancestors have gone through, and I study, you know, our fight, and I study the amazing things that we have done, that history has kept me alive today. But it got to the point where I actually wind up seeing our ancestors. And, you know, they say, uh, you know, if you in America, everybody got to have some form of mental illness. Because every day you're facing things that's unnatural. You're, you're, you're facing things that wicked. is wicked, you know, spirituality all across this planet. Everybody has to have, even our children, got some form of mental illness in this country. And that's why it's so important to focus on mental illness and you utilize post-traumatic slave syndrome, which Dr. Joy DeGraff coined for us, which is our specific, unique mental illness from dealing with American racism for centuries. So y'all need to look up the word post-traumatic slave syndrome. They don't want us saying that we got that. Because if we as black people say we got post-traumatic slave syndrome, and once you learn what post-traumatic slave syndrome is, they got to pay you for it. Right? If, if the American Psychological Association acknowledges post-traumatic slave syndrome, that changes the game. That means they got to 
take care of everybody. So, you know, I, I advocate us. We got to continue to study. We got to continue to read. Um, they, they always would say, you want to hide anything, put it in a book for black people. Because they say well, black people don't know how to read and we don't like to read. Right. Yeah. It's important to know how to read, man. That's probably one of your most powerful weapons is reading. In uh, 2019, a Lord history, uh, myself along with 350 children in Baltimore made history of the world. We took the red, black, and green human flag, no, sorry, the red, black, and green flag to a whole nother level. And what we did was we turned it into a human flag. So it's only one other flag in, in the United States that had been turned into a human flag with 6,000 children. And that was in 1940, and they're still doing it today. They still got our children holding up the red, white, and blue. So we are, we are not holding up the red, black, and green. So we made history in 2019 and turned it into a 350 children human flag. And, and, and it, 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 you can't imagine what a human flag is. Basically, you hold them colors. My friend right here, he has uh, material. We brought it here because everybody wanted to make our own little human flag outside. Yes, sir. But basically, we hold them colors, and then I, I put my drone up in the sky, and it looked like a huge red, black, and green flag. So imagine 350 children holding up the colors red, black, and green. I promise. And unless it's my purpose and it's my time to leave this planet, we gonna beat the American record, six thousand strong of our people holding up that red, black, and green flag. Amen. We gonna beat it. It's gonna be the Guinness World Record. They go, Guinness World Record gonna have to come out because unfortunately, black people a lot of times we don't we don't appreciate nothing unless the white man appreciate it first. So we'll let the white man come with his Guinness World Record and acknowledge that we have the biggest human flag in the world on this soil right here. But basically we make a statement to say that look man, that red, white, and blue ain't representing us. That's right. See, right? We need we need a flag that has that represents us as a people because we still struggling. Imagine that. Six thousand plus of us holding up our own colors. That picture going across the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That'll spark a fire and an energy like we ain't never seen in this generation before. And it's possible. Why? One, because our children want to make history. Our children want to know that we did something famous. I'm a part of history. Our little children, they want to know that this represents me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that's, that's very possible. We just got to make it exciting. So, you know, I'm going to be working with Brother Malik big time. Um, this, I, I'm telling you, I got butterflies, y'all. Like, Dr. Khaled, to me, was like that walk and go. Right. Real talk, guys. Right? So that's just me. That's me. Right? So, I'm so excited because I'm doing the work of my ancestors. I don't care what the consequences of that come with it, life, death. They done put me in that prison. They done strip me butt naked. They done put me in suicide. There's nothing that can happen to me that I'm afraid of. Nothing. And now that I know my spirit. I know, I know my spirit. My spirit is eternal. And that's what we had to teach the babies. You got something inside of you, young king, that's, that's, that's forever. It can never die. And it's called your soul. And once you learn that you have a soul, nothing can stop you. That's right. Nothing can stop you. Nothing. So that's what we got to remember, family. Put, put the spirit first. The spirit of the divine, whether it's a law, whatever it is that you believe in, put the spirit first. And no matter what, we will win. Yes, My we're coming to a close with this part before we go in. We just look around and feel the spirit and give yourself another strong round of applause. <laughs> this has never happened. Come on, brother Greg. This has never happened here on Nelson Place. The word of unity and brotherhood and sisterhood and love and knowledge has not happened on Nelson Place, but this is the grand opening of the Black Community Resource Center and the Black Men's Training Academy. It's sponsored by the Black Men's Movement and the Afro-Descendant Nation and the Nelson Place Block Association. So what we're saying here is it took them to conclude, young brothers, we are y'all living on the block. 
Wait a minute, we are your brothers. I, I don't know what kind of support you have from fathers or uncles or brothers. I pray you do. <coughs> but, pardon me. But if you don't, if you don't have that support from other men in this area, we are your brothers. That's why we open in this center. We open in this center so that you can have a brother, that you can have a uh, mentors, so that so that if any of y'all on the block are dealing with anything, right? You may need some therapy. You may need some counseling. You'll be able to get it here. You may have undergone or seen something in your life that may be traumatic. You can get some help here. You might need some resources. You may need a job. We've already been up to it. We get, we bringing jobs here. We bringing resources here. Today we're giving out hygiene kits and we're gonna give away some, some, uh, some clothes and we're giving away plenty of food. We mean nothing but good for our people and we come here to bring good for the block and the neighborhood and we want to thank you for taking your time out, man, because this is going to make a difference. We want to see you live, brother. We want to see you live, not incarcerated and not die. And we're not here to condemn anybody. What we're here to do. Just hold one second. We're going to close. Just hold Don't move too much right now. Just hold one second. You can do that when I finish. Just hold one second. Uh, we are... There's so much potential here. All you got to do is see it in this room, and it's going to grow from here. My last message here, and I want you to hear him good for a minute. This is a young man, right? This is one of the strongest hustlers in the Washington, D.C. area. Ever since I met this young man out here in Washington, D.C., he's been making it happen. He has not been to Howard University. He has not been to uh, uh, any of these colleges or universities. But he never paid a day in his life. This is, no, he hasn't. This man has, has been, has watched his own car, been named all of your businesses. He'll tell you his journey. He's constantly striving to, to do black business and to make something out of himself and he will never take no for an answer and he hates laziness. He hates laziness. He's in a battle right now over on 18th Street, Northwest. He's in a battle. He's opened up his re he's opened up a restaurant over there. And it seemed like that they just going wow. Because a black man had got his hands on the building and the property and is flipping some burgers, then opened them up a restaurant, he then took over the front of the block, then opened up a car wash business on the front of the block, the restaurant inside of the block, Airbnb inside of the building. They set up a rack of police officers on him, and guess what? Every day he's up on his post, he's fighting back, and his attorney should pass his status back. <laughs> To close us out, I want you to hear briefly about the journey of Brother Greg Harris and uh, uh, and his business and his journey because he's a role model for some of y'all, brothers. You can make it, and he's gonna show you. And then we're gonna close out and eat and have us some fun and music, and we love y'all. Let's hear your last message from Brother Greg Harris. All right, y'all. So I, I did switch on how we're gonna come. Here. Talk about and how I was gonna adjust it, but now that I see the crowd, so I know how to better, you know, broadcast this message. So, you know, one day they're gonna want to kill you because of what you control. Okay, all right, and you don't have to be scared to die for what you believe in. Okay, controlling things like real estate, mic, they say. businesses. To control the things like real estate, businesses, not cars, you know, the, the latest fashion, games, you know, controlling the things in a real physical plane, you know, is what this whole thing is all about. That's what we're all here for. That's how you see these new buildings going up. That's why you see our buildings might look like we don't get out of reconstruction dollars to look like the other races and what they're going to have access to when they're here in America. But I'm telling you, you can get these properties from these people in the most unique ways, you know? The way that I did it was the most unorthodox way. That's why they want me dead today. Because they never expected me to weasel in and control what I control at this point. 
Now, it's not to be scared that the powers that be want you and, you know, maybe want to take you out of society and, you know, put you in a little box for a little while. But it's about knowing that your brain is strong enough to see that you're not going to stay there, right? Yes, and from there, it's about having your ideals starting to take place before anybody can take anything from you. At a young age now, you guys are seeing things pass by you. You probably don't understand what it is, but it's what you're going to need to operate in the future, right? These computers, these phones are the most important things of today. You have to learn how to operate them and not just scroll on them to use it at Instagram and post the pictures and things and places. You have to learn the back end of these things. You want to know what the code is. You want to know what artificial intelligence is. So that way you can then become your own uh, entities and sabotage and put your own propaganda out there in a much shorter time span to be able to catch up with the years that you've been taken out of the race essentially. Okay? So the computer is very important of today. Alright? And also controlling where controlling the grounds that you operate your business on is the next most important thing. Because what's what'll happen is they will take everything from you, you will build a business, and then you'll no longer be able to operate there, okay? And you'll be emotional, and you'll act out, and then they'll put you in jail or do things to you where you can't do anything in a normal society. So what it's about now is, you know, not necessarily playing video games for the children, but learning how to make the video games. That's you right. Know, you want to learn the graphic design, and, you know, you create the images of the future and what you want to see the world around you look like. Don't take the dilapidation in the older kids that you may be seeing go on to a wrong path or you know doing things that you know they're not they're not supposed to be doing because of the influences ahead of them but you just have to stay in your own little bubble you know and that's really the name of the whole game there's so much destruction and things going on around you that you're not necessarily able to understand the emotional pain that it's going to do to you up front but you just have to keep this kid-like energy and be happy and know that yeah no actually you tell me no but i don't think this is supposed to tell me no i think it's actually yes so actually always look for the no and make them prove the no wrong because there's nothing to be told you should never be told no of anything in this world we were brought in this world on free will and you only let people control your minds to take you out of your free your freedom of being right so at that point always keep a strong mind okay you guys football the sports the academies it's all cool, right? You see your favorite player catching the ball. I don't know who plays football. I never knew these guys. But when it comes to my businesses that I control, I learn who they are then, and then that's how we meet, right? So what you want to do is not necessarily focus on making people money, or if you are in sports and you guys have athletic bodies and you're going down that route, then have your own brands that you're wearing outside of the school so that way you can generate your own income on your likeness and not just only let people make money off of you. Okay, so what this is all about at this point is maintaining your ground and getting some ground to even stand on. Yes, sir. Right? So once you get the ground, stand on it until it cracks and then you rebuild it from there. But don't let anybody take anything from you. Don't be scared of these police officers driving around in these cars with the bright lights and the noisy, the noisy sound that's coming out of them. That's just to shock you and put you in the state where you can't focus, but you just have to. Drown all that out and keep on doing what you need to do, okay? If y'all see the younger, uh, the older kids with guns on them and you know they ain't supposed to have those guns, call the police! Just call the police, it's okay, because guess what? There are gonna be people in our, in our society who are gonna be bad apples, right? And that's when you use the police. Let's get them on out of the way. So that way we can continue to have a safe place to be. Because in, in DC, there's no need to have a gun on at all. All right, you guys don't need a weapon to protect yourself. You know, you don't need to fight. There's no violence that needs to occur. You just need to stay in the position of knowing that you have something gainfully to do with your time every single day at all times of the day, right? So even if you feel like you're living in your own world and it's a reality world, just make it as real as possible by pulling little pieces of that reality into the real physical plane every day. And then when, by the time you look up, you got a whole life today that you can build and pass down to everyone around you. All right, so listen, the message after this is this. Fight. Okay? I have bruises on me now from my fight with the police when they, when they arrested me and told me that I assaulted them, right? But I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm going to keep on going. They keep harassing me. You know, they keep pulling up. But knowing that they're going to have to make a wrong move and pay me very handsomely one day, 
That's what we, we look for, right? Make them pay for their mistakes. Make them pay for the things that they've done to us, right? At the end of the day, we're not a crying people. You know, we're not people that have our hands out for anything, don't ask for anything. We're gonna take everything in the right way, right? So it is time to start to wisen up and learn technology. These youth are the key to the future because if we can teach them how to use the computer the right way, then everything can change overnight. And it's really that simple. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right? <laughs> All right. Are y'all ready to eat? All right, we're ready to eat. And once again, as we open up this community resource center, y'all may not have heard it, but if you want to learn how to repair walls and, and, and if you want to learn home improvement, if you signed up, we're going to call you because we got black contractors that spoke here today. And we're going to train you for free in home improvement. So if you want a job out here, if you want a job, oh, it's not coming right to you. We're going to ask a couple questions. If you want a job, if you want to get trained to make some money in this city, come right here. We train you in home improvement. We got other jobs. Is that right, Dr. Yes. We got to look up. What kind of job is that? Cleaning job? Cleaning job, yes. The job that Cleaning I do. Jobs. We got training in home improvement job. We got mentorship. We got social work. We got therapy. We can give away your free clothes. You got free clothes here. Today. I can, I can give you the information for people it. People from all over the city are calling and they're trying to bring resources. I got you. I got we got you. solar jobs here. We got the free solar company. We got solar panels. We got all about our people. Yes, and they're bringing their resources here. We got the free solar company here. We are all about our people and improving our way of life on this anniversary of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey's birthday. Up, you mighty nation. We can accomplish what we will. What's your question? Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, why, I mean, I'm not saying all black people are better. Why do some black people, when you talk to them, you know, they go in detail, they give you, when you're about to do the work, they go in detail, you have to do this thing. And they can put this empty work on this thing. Uh, like a million things, you know, like, uh, it's like, you know, you ain't do this job, and they give you all the stuff you got to do, but, you know, they make excuses, you know, like, they, 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 they do your thing. That's like your own, so, you know, like, you do them a favor, they do you a favor, you got to all you do. Our people mean well. Yeah, yeah. Most of our people in our meetings mean well. I can't answer for everybody. So I can tell you that right here at this at this community resource center that we're about business and taking direct action. We about here, we're about spreading some black love, some black unity. We're about helping some economic empowerment. We're about saving some lives. And this right here represents what, 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 what we are going to do. I don't know about anybody else, but I know here that we're on the move. That's right. We're on the move all over the city. We set up, we set up here on Nelson Place. We got to set up over here on the uh, same thing we're doing here. We're doing on uh, the big chair. Same thing we're doing here. We're setting up down on Kenilworth Avenue and Eastern Avenue by Imam Ali's uh, place. All over this city, we're going after to save our people in general, and we're going after the black man first. If you don't mind. That's all we're saying. We are for life, and we're not for death. We have not given up on our people. We don't care how bad it's been. We don't care what crimes you have committed. We don't care if you've been molested. As a child, you can come back. That's right. There's somebody out here that loves you who really love you and we are here permanently and for good you're going to see that we can help you get that and it's free you know, 1200 different trains it's all online though you got to do it yourself you put your own hours in and it's free certifications and it's through IBM okay through IBM so what we're saying here is that if you need a certain skill right you here you need a certain skill to get something done a computer skill a home improvement skill a skill we have, we the men that's connected to the skills. We got skills here in technology. We got skills here at home improvement. We can we gonna link you to. We got skills here in solar panel distribution. Whatever the skill is you need, if you need legal skills, if you serious and you need legal skills, just say you want to be a lawyer one day. Well, you sign up here. We gonna have legal classes here. You sign up here. You can intern in my law office. I don't have a problem with it. Brother, we'll do what it can to do to save your life. And this is where black men are coming together to help save the lives of our people.
We honor you. We gotta we gonna go outside and eat and talk and fellowship. We're gonna bring the hygiene, kiss the food out. Let's hold hands together for meditation. Together. Let's say a word here. Let me see that, Brother Darnell. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.